we were um, investigating, you know, what uh, leads to stratospheric ozone destruction. We looked at some natural sources and found out that the natural sources can't explain, uh, you know, um, the 8% decrease in the ozone concentration over the last 20 years. And so um, we had to look to some synthetic sources, some man-made um, chemical that has been introduced into the environment over the last 30 years or so. And the conclusion was that it's the CFCs that have been introduced. It's a new um, chemical that was very, very useful in um, allowing the growth of uh, industry because it's a safe refrigerant. So it's used in um, refrigerators and air conditioning units. It's also used as a foaming agent in uh, making plastics and other um, industrial processes. Not to mention, uh, in, um, even in hairspray, um, aerosol cans use CFCs to, um, because under pressure they're liquid, and then uh, when the pressure is reduced, they go to a gas, and they would carry, for example, hairspray um, across, um, you know, from the can to a person's head. So anyway, they got um, used pretty widespread in the modern um, uh, economies over the last 30 years or so. So anyway, because of all these unique properties that it's you know not toxic and it's very, very stable, um, the CFCs are also stable in the environment. You can breathe them in and breathe them out. They're not going to react with the other, you know, metabolites in your body or whatnot. Um, and so um, because, for example, if you look at Freon 12, um, um, for example, that or the CFC 12, um, that was the one that had two chlorines and two fluorines. And we noted that these bonds are very, very strong, so it's a very, very stable molecule. As a matter of fact, it's stable in the atmosphere, um, you know, can be stable in the atmosphere, in the lower atmosphere, for up to 120 years. Um, so that's a very, very stable molecule. And it takes about five years for this um, molecule, if it's released on the, you know, at the ground level, it takes about five years for it to make it up to the stratosphere. Okay, to make its way up to the stratosphere. Um, and I think you all know that, you know, gas particles, gas molecules, and gas atoms move very, very fast, but every time a gas, you know, a molecule collides with another gas molecule, it's going to change direction. So these, these gases, you know, they're bouncing all over the place, and eventually over time they'll make enough, you know, motion to get themselves out to the stratosphere, enough, if you will, forward motion. So anyway, it takes about five years. So they're very stable until they get into the stratosphere, and when they get into the stratosphere, they um, will actually um, break down in the presence of UVC radiation. Okay, it takes high energy ultraviolet radiation, but it is present in the upper, upper atmosphere. And in the presence of that radiation, it's enough energy to break these very stable bonds. And the CCL bonds are stronger, so the bond that's broken in the presence of this UV radiation of less than 220 nanometers in wavelength, you end up with this. Um, okay, it's a very reactive, it's a free radical, this is left as a free radical, and then this chlorine is the bad guy, it's a very, very reactive um, atom. Remember, you know, once the bond is broken, this, the free radical is short for the Lewis symbol, which is seven electrons in its valence electron. We, we model it with just one dot, but that doesn't mean there's just one electron. That's the way we model free radicals to indicate there's an unpaired electron. And unpaired electrons are very, very unstable. And so the actual atom that you've released into the upper atmosphere is a chlorine atom. And the chlorine atom is very, uh, very reactive. Okay. So um, the freon, although it's stable and good in the troposphere, once it gets up into the upper atmosphere, will react with high energy ultraviolet radiation, break the bond to form the chlorine um, atom.